louder. Yay. Louder. Yay. Louder. <gasps> Yay. You ruined it. You ruined it and I'm leaving. The class 365, the 465, and the 466 are a British family of two or four car AC or DC electric multiple units called networkers. Built in York by AC Brown Bobbery, British Rail Engineering Limited, and Metro Camel in the early 1990s, the networkers have been running both inter-urban and inter-regional services in the southeast of England since. They can be seen serving places such as London King's Cross, London Cannon Street, Lewisham, Sandy, Orpington, Dover Priory, Maidstone, Peterborough, Bulldog, Sevenoaks, Green Hythe for Blue Water, and Swale. Oh yeah they also went on holiday to Scotland for a short amount of time a few years back. Have these trains done anything good for the UK's railway network since the 90s, or are the passengers just begging for the sweet release of death? and for their inevitable replacement? Let's find out. As the name implies, these trains share similarities with the class 165 and 166 network turbos we looked at last year. Fortunately, they differ from these trains enough that both the review and the conclusion will be more than different enough to warrant a new video. They do share a few things among themselves such as similar, if not, the same type of seat design and interior layout, the same type of toilets and doors that open really quick for some reason. One thing is for sure, the networkers aren't just a quote unquote electric version of the 165. But it wouldn't surprise me if some people actually thought that. Let's start with introducing the 365s. These 40 units are the express networker units that operate on the East Coast Main Line and were the flagship units of the Cambridge and Peterborough services. Just like how the H28 bus route is the flagship bus in Heston. One interesting quirk about the 365 is that they are technically bisexual I mean dual voltage. Between 1997 and around 2004, some units saw use in Kent on the long distance London Victoria to Ramsgate and over services, meaning that they had to run using DC power. They didn't swap between AC and DC like the 319, and considering that they all sodded off back to the East Coast main line in the early 2000s, it wasn't hard to say if it was successful or not. Though for reasons you will see later, I would rather ride a 365 from London to Dover than a 465. The 465s and 466s are the most numerous of the networkers, totaling 147 465s and a total of 43 for the 466s. Operating purely under DC power, these units have been running alongside the likes of the 376 on various suburban train services in the southeast of London. They don't exclusively serve London however. Some networkers dare venture towards other regions of Kent, like Tunbridge Wells and some of those units have been modified with the addition of first class. Because lol. The 466 frequently joins up with the 465 to create 6, 8 or 10 car formations, increasing capacity by making the train longer, instead of doing what everyone else in Europe does by making trains double deckers, because our loading gauge sucks. As the 465s continued to dominate the lines in southeast London over the years, the 365s were progressively demoted further and further down the totem pole of train services. Nowadays, they seldom run the full London to Peterborough services, and as for the likes of Cambridge and Kingsley, lol no, have a 387 or a 700 instead. Actually, I have a serious question. Why do Great Northern run peak hour services to terminate at Baldock instead of Royston? Surely Royston would be a better station to turn back at as more passengers travel to and from there. I'm genuinely curious about this, so any input is appreciated. The networkers are fast though each in their own ways. The 465s and 466 are easily some of the fastest accelerating DC multiple units in the UK outside of light rail and metros, making it perfect for stop-start commuter train services. Only the likes of the Deciris get close but most importantly, it's nearly twice as fast as the 455, which was only 10 years younger at the time of introduction. The 365's acceleration isn't as good, and is on par with the likes of the Electro Stars, but this acceleration is traded for a higher top speed of 100 miles per hour. The 465 and 466 lack the gearing and dampers to go that fast and thus, they're out of puff at 75 miles per hour. 
This makes them perfect for running on the London to Dover Priory Express service which totally doesn't have long sections of 90 miles per hour running to help melt the traction motors. So what are the networkers like to ride on? Starting with the 365, the interior of the train offers a rather sensible 2 plus 2 seating arrangement. The colors make the interior nice and bright to look at and the seats aren't too bad honestly. They offer a good amount of give on the base, have decent legroom, and have a folding table where the layout permits. The table however, is a bit on the small side. Good luck using an iPad, and having your cup of cold coffee on it. You'll have to choose between the two before you board. Some areas of the carriage have sizable luggage spaces and there are racks above your head which offer decent space for your personal belongings. The longest journey I have been on a 365 was the full London to Kings Lynn service and back, which I found perfectly fine to ride on, and left the train without a number. Air conditioning is provided via these twist events above the seats. These are supplemented with opening windows that, unlike the class 165s, aren't bolted shut. Thank goodness for that. A decent sized wheelchair space is here in one of the center coaches which houses a universal toilet. It's about the same size as the ones we've seen already on the network Turbus and the 319. Another toilet is located in the other center coach along, which is small enough to be confused to be an alternative portal to Narnia. Basic announcements and scrolling displays are provided, but like the 458, these are usually out of sync, because the text scrolls too slowly. First class is your typical quote unquote, 20% better in exchange for 10,000% more money kind of seating. Close off from the working class, you get bigger tables, slightly bigger seats and armrests. That's it. Oh, and you can also hear the motors well from there too. Considering the area the 465s and 466s run in, it should be no surprise to hear that they have their interiors predictably worse. Whilst the seats are largely the same, we have to wave hello to 3 plus 2 seating. Why? You can never fit 3 adults in a row of 3 plus 2 seating. It's just way too uncomfortable. I'll accept losing the tables behind the seats, sure, but come on. Thank goodness the class 700 doesn't come with 3 plus 2 seating, but that train has more than enough issues for me. The seats themselves are fine for the journeys they are seen on, but as you can see from this video I recorded several years ago, they have a technical quirk that can make them feel a bit cheap. On a brighter note, the 465s and 466 still have air conditioning and opening windows, so you don't evaporate if you get stuck awaiting a clear path through Lewisham. A single accessible toilet and wheelchair area is here too, which is nice. Again, just one compared to the 365's pair of toilets but fine whatever. Oh yeah, forgot to say, none of what I said about the wheelchair space and accessible toilet applies to the 466. It does have a toilet, but you'd be hard pressed to get yourself into it, let alone someone in a wheelchair. It would appear that the Department of Transport, and to an extent Southeastern have this innate fear of making their trains fully accessible for the disabled. Instead of modifying the 466 with said facilities, they are using a workaround of just always coupling one to a 465. Because as we know, when you scribble out the problem, it goes away forever and ever. Even the likes of the Pacers and the Class 153 have dedicated wheelchair spaces on board. That's a sign right there of how bad it is. Hopefully the future of these units will be on a more positive note. Currently there is no confirmed replacement for the class 465 and 466 which makes sense. The units are barely 30 years old, yes, but were refurbished not too long ago and still are holding their ground in terms of reliability. The 365s are due to be sent to the wait hold on a second. Why are they getting rid of these trains now? They even lied in the article about the trains lacking air conditioning. Surely keeping these units running on peak hour trains would be better than storage, no? These trains aren't even being scrapped, and will just be kept in storage. Which to me is even worse. Nothing screams waste of resources than keeping something locked away and not being used by anyone. Congratulations, you have emoted this train to a level even worse than Apple from Konosuba. On the plus side, thanks to the likes of the internet, even when the 365s are sent to the naughty step, you will never be more than a few clicks away from being able to listen to some of the greatest sounding trends the UK has to offer.
conclusion. Honestly I think the networkers are pretty good trains. They've aged much better than I expected them to though this is largely helped by the refurbishments over the years. The 365s are nice to ride on, and are a damn sight more comfortable than what is replacing them. The 465s make for being well-rounded commuter trains and the sound of them has grown on me over the years, making it a pleasure to ride on and listen to that exceptional soundtrack. I cannot however forgive the Department of Transport for not making sure the 466 was wheelchair accessible. Really, they had 11 years to fix that. Hopefully they are replaced with something sensible and just as fast. Or not. Now you know my thoughts on the networkers. Go out there, and next time you feel a bit down regards to not being able to listen to the original brush motors on the 465s, just remember that maybe, just maybe, the real brush 465 was the friends you made on the way here.